this time. Come on, let us bless him. His name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Merry Christmas, everyone. How many folk are glad to be around as we celebrate the birth of our Savior? Well, I ask that you would just take a moment and think about God's goodness to you by sending his son to save this world. And repeat after me, Lord, we thank you for your precious gift. And Lord, we bless you for your obedience to the Father. Now give God a rousing round of applause for loving us enough to send what we needed through Christ, our Lord and our Savior. As you're standing in the service of celebration, our hymn this morning is a very familiar hymn. The hymn simply says, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Let us sing with power and with purpose this great hymn of the church. Joy to the world. Why? Because the Lord is come. If you're at home, join in as well. Come on, joy. standing for our prayer. Let us pray. For unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus our Lord, we come into your holy and righteous presence at this time to say thank you. Lord, there are so many things we could thank you for. But we thank you for that great gift that you gave unto this world. The greatest gift that this world has ever known. We pause to say thank you. Because that gift keep on giving. It, we find we have salvation in that gift. We have healing in that gift. We, we have everything in that gift that you gave. We come to say thank you. Thank you for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for our lying down as late as last night. Thank you for our uprising this morning. For our uprising, we uh, was able to see the beauty of another day. We thank you for last night's sleep. Our sleep was not the sleep of death. And uh, the bed that we lied on was not our cooling bowl this morning. But we come to say thank you. We realized this morning that you didn't have to do it for us, but you did it anyhow. When we look back over our lives and see how, where you have brought us from, so many have fallen by the wayside, but you keep on leading us in your grace and in your mercy. So we come to worship you. We come to praise your name in your house today. 
we come to say hallelujah to the name of our God. For your name is worthy to be praised today. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, among us this morning, there are many who are not enjoying the blessing that we are enjoying. There are some this morning who are not able to come to the house of worship. And so we lift them up before you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you look upon trustee John Blake this morning. Bless him only as a God like you can do. Draw nigh to him. Touch, let him touch the hem of your garment because there's healing virtue in your garment this morning. Bless somebody right now, some sick person right now, someone who is in a sick room. We ask that you will bless somebody. Look upon those in nursing home, hospital, and even in the jails this morning. We lift them up before you and ask that you will just touch in each Bless somebody right now. Draw somebody into your kingdom, into a relationship with you, Lord. We just thank you for the season that we are celebrating. We can never stop thanking you for what you did for us. Moreover, Lord, we cannot th thank you enough for what you did for us out on Calvary. That shed his blood that covered our sin. For it's written in your word, you said, Bless are the man, the woman whose sin been covered. Oh, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord. We thank you for that precious gift. Oh, we ask that you're continuing to bless us all. Bless this branch of Zion called Mount Calvary. We pray for our spiritual, our spiritual leader. We ask that you're continuing to bless him only as a God like you can do. Bless his household and his family. And Lord, while you're blessing his family, remember all the families of this branch of Zion. Remember all those who have their name on the prayer list this morning throughout the land and country because we know you are God who is and you are everywhere at the same time. So continue to bless us. Lord, you are so good and so kind unto us. But we realize, our Father, that this whole world is not our home. We have heard of another city, a city not made by hand. Over there where Job has declared that the wicked would cease from troubling one day. And our weary souls would be at rest. Lord, we pray without the loss of one. Under the sound of my voice, whether on social media, in this house, we ask that you would bless us all. To be able to see your face one day. And to hear your welcome voice saying, well done, thy good and faithful son. You've been faithful over a few things. Come up high and I'll make you rule over many. Our Father, this is our prayer. And we close it with thanksgiving. Thanks. Because when we look back over our lives, we can say, look where the Lord has brought us from. He's brought us over the hill, the mountains of our lives. He brought us through the valley. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the name of our God. Lord, this is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say. Oh, come let us
you be. Oh, we love him today. We call his name. Oh, Christ. celebrating the Savior's birth. His name is Christ the Lord. He who saved us from our sins. Anybody glad to be saved, first of all? Anybody thankful that you're covered? Come let us adore him. What's his name? Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of our God. And we thank God for this beautifully brisk Christmas day. Amen. We're just thankful that we're able to come out Glad to see so many of you as we've come to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And as I shared with those on last night at uh, candlelight service, I did not leave the refrigerator door, refrigerator door open. This cold weather is not my doing. So y'all show me some love. Don't hate on me. But the reality is God knows exactly what he's doing. And we're grateful that we're able to come out. And thank God you have heaters in your home and heaters in your car. So I'm glad that you did not think it robbery to make it out to the house of worship. For those of you who are tuning in this morning, God bless you. Merry Christmas. And we pray that you too uh, have the joy of knowing that God loved us enough to send the perfect gift to humanity. So we bless you and love you with the love of Christ. How many of you all know that when we come together again on a Sunday, the Lord's will, it will be a new year? Y'all miss what I just said. If the Lord allowed us to come together again... It will be a new year. That means from January to December, he's covered every last one of us. Some of us have had some mountains to climb and some valleys to go through, but he's covered every one of us. Is there anybody that can give him an end of the year praise? Uh, it may not have been an easy year for you, but you made it. You've had some rough places this past year, but you made it. You've suffered some losses this year, but by the grace of God, guess what? Take a name and say, I made it. Come on, bless him for keeping you and allowing you to come to this last Sunday, December 25th of 2022, to tell God thank you as we celebrate the birth of our, you can do better than that, come on. Somebody thank God. You know some folk, if you call their names right now, they could not answer, but he kept you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of our God. And let me say it in case you too bougie to say it. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And we thank God for the opportunity, especially to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. I feel a little warm. I feel better now. This morning, if we have any, any guests, would you stand? If we have any guests this morning, would you just stand? Any guests this morning, please stand. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. If we have any guests listening in this morning, we pause to, to thank God for you as well. But for those who are here in the sanctuary, we want to personally say thank you for coming out to be a part of this worship celebration on this, the Lord's birthday. And we pray that if you're visiting loved ones, that you will have a wonderful time as you're sharing with loved ones and friends. But if you've recently relocated to the area, then we would that you would prayerfully uh, consider the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast as your home. We would tell anybody anywhere, you may find some bigger, but you'll be hard-pressed to find any better. And the motto is simply this. They shall know that we are Christians by our love. And we love you with the love of Christ. We thank you for coming. As we say each Sunday, may the Lord God bless you real, real good. Come on, let's thank God again for our guests. Those who are tuning in, we thank God for you as well. You may be seated. We'll have our announcements, um, but I want to just share two things that may not show up on the screen. Um, this Saturday, which will be New Year's Eve, uh, we will not be having a traditional watch night service where we come out at 1030 and worship. But what I'm going to ask you all to do is to meet me at 6 o'clock on our prayer line. We want to come together and pray at 6 p.m. this Saturday uh, as we close out this year. And just as we do for Monday morning with the master, not, not the Zoom, but for Monday morning with the master, uh, call in on that line and we're going to have a time of prayer. And just thank God for how he has brought us and how he has kept us 
down through the years. So I'm just believing all of y'all are going to join us uh, as we come together just to thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, and prayerfully thank him if he's going to allow us to see a brand new year. Amen? Would you all do that for me? Amen. And then the next morning, which will be New Year's Day, I pray that you will meet me right back here as we will come together to celebrate the fact that God has done it again, allowed us to make it to another year. So this Saturday, 6 p.m., we pray that you join us for our time of prayer. We will not be having a watch night service per se. That will be our time together uh, as church family and believers uh, to pray and to thank God for his goodness toward us. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Not the Zoom call, but the phone line for Monday morning with the master. So thank you in advance uh, for your cooperation in this endeavor. At this time, we ask now that you would give your attention to the screen for our announcements. Good morning, Mount Calvary, and welcome to Christmas 2022. And these are your church announcements. After you've opened the gift and eaten all the good food today, don't forget, tomorrow, Monday morning with the Master, virtual prayer and praise. It's every Monday at 8.30 a.m. Bible study is Wednesday, December the 28th at 8.30 a.m. There will be no youth Sunday school today, Sunday, December the 25th. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus in November 2023. Call Sister Lois Allen for more information. Her number is 609-412-3049. Free youth golf lessons, ages 7 to 17. Call Daryl Oliver, Eagles Junior Golf Director. Call 386-503-0044. Volunteers are needed for Saturdays from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. and Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Grace Community Food Pantry, 245 Education Way in Bunnell. Prayers for Victory in Spiritual Warfare. If you ordered a book, you can pick it up Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please keep in mind that our office is closed Monday, December 25th, 2022, and Monday, January 2nd, 2023. The men's ministry meeting is Saturday, January 7th, from 9 a.m. in the Family Life Center. Save the date. Pastoral 25th Anniversary, Sunday, January the 15th, 2023, beginning at 9.30 a.m. Come rejoice and celebrate our pastor and Lady Coffee on 25 years of faithful service. Pastor Carl N. Flagg is your guest speaker from Mount Tabor First Baptist Church in Palatka, Florida. Save the date, Monday, January the 16th, 2023, at 11 a.m. The New York City Transit Retirees of Florida annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. ecumenical program. Circuit Judge Joan Anthony of the Seventh Judicial Circuit of Florida will be your speaker. Remember, there are several ways to give here at Mount Calvary, by scan, by mail, by Dropbox, and in person. Just remember that these announcements can be found in printed form as you exit the sanctuary in the foyer. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, these are the announcements for December 25th, 2022. Y'all have a Merry Christmas and a happy, happy holiday. Pray that you are giving the announcements your undivided attention and that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Also, let me give a shout out uh, to those who shared yesterday in our caroling. Um, yesterday was not the warmest day of the year. Uh, and I rolled by and I saw a ton of cars up here, which means we had good representation from those who went to Brighton, um, those persons today who are unable to come out to worship. Each year we have those from the church led by the youth ministry and others, the choir that will go around to our members who are homebound just to share some joy. And they go in and sing songs to them and, and they're always blessed by that. So I just want to say a big shout out to those who took time out of their schedules on yesterday to go by and to show and to share some love to many of our members who would like to be here but are unable to do so. So Pastor loves you and I appreciate you so very much. Also for those who were with us on last week um, for our food giveaway, uh, as we partner with Inspiration of Hope, um, I think it rained that whole morning if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, but many of you partnered with your past, and we were out here uh, to be a blessing. And we had a good turnout of persons coming out um, to have their needs met. And just thankful for a church that doesn't mind giving. Amen. And I know it was uncomfortable. Uh, I was wet, you were wet, but I believe God was pleased with our effort. So thank you. Uh, I love you all to the moon and back. Give yourselves a hand. I really appreciate serving such a wonderful and selfless church. And I wanted to say that as we close out the year to my office staff and to all of those who uh, make it possible for us to enjoy this beautiful sanctuary being nice and clean, air conditions being set to the office staff, to all of you. Uh, I appreciate you and those who are not here who work in the office. God bless you uh, because teamwork makes the dream work. And so I wanted to publicly thank all of those who continue many times to work behind the scenes to make sure we're able to worship and experience um, the benefits of being part of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast. To all of our leaders, our deacons, our trustees, and all of our officials, I love you and I appreciate you as well. So just know my prayer is that God will allow us to come into the new year, uh, continuing to work together to do a serious work for a soon coming king. Amen? Amen. And God bless you all. Today is the final Sunday of the month, which means today is birthday Sunday. If you have a birthday in the month of December, would you please stand? Anyone having a birthday in the month of December, if, it's, if this is your month, please stand. Come on, let us see you. You know what to do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. celebrate because your birthday is coming. Happy birthday and may the Lord continue to bless each and every one of you uh, to see many more years. God is good and all the time. And just a quick shameless plug before we receive our offering. Uh, there were two individuals who stood to my left right here. Uh, many of you all would know them because they are our children, mine and first lady's children. Uh, they are with us. Uh, one of them is married. Uh, the other one is, is still looking. Uh, we're praying that God's going to work that out in his time. But I'm going to ask my son and my daughter to stand. Erica and EJ, amen. Would you all stand? Amen. They blessed us. They were able to come down for Christmas. Uh, and I was surprised my daughter came because my daughter is a brand new homeowner. Do you hear what I'm saying? A brand new homeowner. And you don't want to leave your new house, but... She loved Mama and Papa enough to come down with her brother to share with us on Christmas. And so we're glad to have them both. Uh, and I, if my brother is Boo, my brother long, he didn't make my brother long. Thought he was coming with us this morning. But we're so grateful to have them with us. And God bless you and thank you for making your Mama and Papa so happy. Amen. Let us now, Amen. Let us now prepare for our offering. Uh, on last night, uh, I let it be known that I've asked everyone to partner with Pastor for the giving of your end of the year gift. I brought mine on last night and gave it, and so hopefully you have yours. If you don't have it today, you can bring it between now and the end of the year. Drop it off at the church, but we want to make sure we finish the year in an act of giving those who feel compelled to do so, to thank God uh, and to be a blessing to this church uh, as we continue to move forward. So whatever your gift is going to be, that's between you and God, but we pray that you have thought about it and prayed about it and are willing to make a special offering uh, as we close out this year. Amen? Let us all stand as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him all Pray. 
specific instructions and our ushers. As you come around, we ask that you come around with a smile on your face because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Eternal God and our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the one which was and is and is to come. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for this opportunity that we can be in your presence, in your house this morning, God, to be a part of this worship experience, Lord, in giving. And as your people come forward today, God, and give back a portion of what you have blessed them with, Lord, we thank you for the givers this morning, and we thank you for the gifts this morning. So, Father, as your people give, God, some this morning, God, want to give, but they don't have to give. So I ask that you, Lord, that you will bless them, God, so that next time around, they will have to give. And as this portion of what they have given, God, go back to your furtherance of your work. We call it, Father, that you will bless it and sanctify it this morning. Why we say thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh. Thank you. 
You're amazing, so amazing. You caught the sun, the sun and no to shine. I'm so glad you're mine. Oh, I'm glad to stay you're mine. Cause I'm gonna talk. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. So amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You call the sun, the sun and moon to shine. Yeah. Hey. 
short read today Luke second chapter one verse verse number seven we're going to read this one together Luke chapter two verse seven and I'm reading from the King James version of the Bible and it reads as follows are we there starting at verse seven and it says and she brought forth her firstborn son. Come on. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Let's do that one more time. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the end. While you're standing, I want you to be prayerful as I will share from this theme and from this thought. I want to talk about a message in a manger. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, pastor wants to preach with this thought on our minds. A message in a manger. You may be seated. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. My sisters and brothers, though the celebration of Christmas comes each year, it never ceases to inspire a fresh perspective of our coming Christ. There are some wells that, that, that never run dry, Deacon Murray. There are some horizons that expand every time we draw near. There are some stories that are always reaching back as they move us forward toward eternity. The news of, of Christ's birth is one of those stories because it takes us down to the depths of mystery and up to the heights of glory. Christmas sermons are, are inexhaustible. I think all of us know that by now. Matter of fact, the entire gospel is inexhaustible because when you think about it, it's simply a revelation. The revelation of the Son of God. Listen, it's a record. It's the record of divine atonement and forgiveness. It's gospel. It's, it, it's a declaration, a, a declaration of God's mercy, God's goodness, and God's grace. This is gospel. It is an account. It, it, it's an account of God's eternal plan for mankind. I think Romans 1.16 says it this way. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. In other words, my sisters and brothers, the gospel is good news. And it began in a manger. Y'all got 15 minutes? Maybe someone may be asking, well, well, preacher, why a manger? Well, we may fully never know, but I, I've got some Holy Ghost hints I want to share with you. But I can tell you this. We want to look at the significance of that particular manger. If we look at Christ's child showing up in humanity the first thing I want you to see is that the manger was meager. Everybody say the manger was meager. Made of, of simple wood, Chairman Joseph. It was nothing more than a feeding trough. There's no need to try to make it big or romanticize it. It was merely a common corn crib meant to hold scraps of food for slobbering animals. I'm sure Mary and Joseph cleaned it up as best they could. I'm sure Deacon Kirk that, that they softened the bed with fresh hay and, and swaddling cloth to make it as comfortable as possible. But, but its purpose did not change. Luke gives us his account of, of this miraculous moment and he says, she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And now on the periphery to some the Savior's birth may look like a fluke. Dr. Fontaine, but can I share with all of us here today to remind everyone that everything that God does is intentional. Did you catch that? Listen, God had plenty of time to, to, to prepare for this important arrival. In fact, Micah, the prophet, prophesies 700 years before this birth that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. He says in Micah 5 and 2, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler of Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Think about it. God had seven centuries to plan the details of his son's arrival on earth. He did it at the right place. He did it at the right time. And he did it in the right way. So it may seem strange to some, even though he did that, 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 that he chose Mary and Joseph, a couple who lived far from Bethlehem. He then had to move Mary and Joseph, watch this, to the right place 
by having the most powerful leader in the world order a census that required everyone to go to the town of their origin. God knew exactly, Reverend Pinnock, what he was doing. For he was fulfilling biblical prophecy. Someone may be saying, yeah, yeah, pastor, but, but, but why, well, why a manger? Well, keep in mind, I understand what you're saying because I, I can feel you because this was the first chapter in the life of the son of God on earth. I get it. And you're saying, well, surely he deserved a bed fit for a king. After all, Pharaoh's children slept on satin and lace. Didn't the king of glory deserve the same when he came into the world? I feel you. But listen, the truth is that many a child has been coddled with beds fit for royalty, yet they grew up to be anything but royal. And that's a sermon for another time. But here's the point I want you to catch. The bed does not make the man. <laughs> Nor does the clothes make the man. Nor does the location ad identify the man. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying the manger was simply a reflective uh, reflection of the mild-mannered messenger it cradled. Yes, first of all, the manger was meager. But then the second thing I want you to consider is this, that the manger conveys a compelling message. Everybody say a compelling message. There's a reason why the shepherds were the first to hear of this miraculous birth. You know the story. The shepherds were, were, were the lowest of the low on the social scale. In fact, the shepherds, they, they slept with animals. Now, now, let me help you. They didn't sleep with, with, with Yorkie pools and, and, and cocker spaniels like we do. Y'all talk to me if you can. No. When I say they slept with animals, I mean they slept with goats and, and sheep, which means uh, they stunk like animals. Are y'all hearing me? They lived the simplest of lives. And most of it was outdoors, Reverend Watson, with nowhere to lay their heads. It had to be a complete shock when, when a band of angels came to them uh, at night in all of their glory to deliver a message of good tidings and great joy. And they said, they said for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Aside from, from the method of, of their delivery, what was so unusual about this baby that made this message so compelling? Well, I can tell you that it wasn't the swaddling clothes because every baby born in biblical antiquity uh, uh, was wrapped in these softened clothes that their mama had beaten on the rocks weeks before their birth. It, it, it wasn't the swaddling clothes. No, no. It was the manger. And, and, and who but shepherds could identify with the humble birth in a manger? And I'm sure the shepherds had to be shocked for over 300 years, Reverend Pena, from Isaiah to Malachi, the prophets had been promising the arrival of their Messiah. And for 400 more years, Reverend Watson, God had cut his computer off and he was silent. They couldn't get an email. They couldn't collect with him in any kind of shape or form. During all that time, the Jews had come up with an idea in their mind of what their king was going to look like. The Jews fantasized about the arrival of a warrior king who would slay their enemies and, and give them back their power and prestige and, and give them back their land. Could it be that a manger meant to hold scraps would cradle the head of God's deliverer? The very idea compelled these shepherds to go and see what the Lord hath made known unto them. Could, could it be, could it be that, that their deliverer would be poor just like them? Could, could it be that their deliverer also had nowhere to lay his head. Could it be that their deliverer came first to liberate the shepherds? The message of the manger would soon be clear. The temporary manger was a fitting beginning for a God-man who would soon have no place to lay his head. In fact, his parents would soon bundle him up and take him to Egypt and hide him from a barbaric narcissistic fellow by the name of Herod who was bent on killing the Christ child. 
thus would begin the nomadic existence of our earthly king whose home, whose real home was far from Bethlehem, far from Nazareth, far from Egypt, and even far from Jerusalem. The shepherds would be the first to realize that the manger's message was one of hope. Everybody shout hope. And hope not just for the folk who had a six-digit bank account. It was hope not just for the privileged, but it was hope for all mankind because the manger held a message. The message was, it was a, a message of love for the unlovely. It was a message of mercy for the miserable. It was a message of grace for the guilty. That's me right there. It, it, it was a message of joy for the wretched. The manger was a magnificent manifestation of a promise not only being made, but of a promise being fulfilled. Can I give you one more and I'll turn you loose so you can get on your pots and your greens and your potato salad? One other thing to consider about the message in the manger. The manger held the Messiah. Everybody say, thank God for the Messiah. This rough wooden pen constructed by an unknown carpenter cradled the head of a future carpenter who would one day rebuild our world by robing himself in anguish and pain as a prepared sacrifice for the sins of man. Our Christ, he left the realms of glory for a feeding trough that would lead to a sacrificial cross. The shepherds, they traveled with haste, clinging to the hope delivered by the heavenly host. In other words, they gathered their herds and they drove them, Deacon Murray, hard until they came to the place where the young child lay. And seeing him lying there in a manger, I'm convinced that they were fully persuaded that Jehovah had delivered on his promise. That hope was now in sight. That the prophecy had now been fulfilled and that salvation was near because the manger held the Messiah. But not only that, it gets better because you do know that, that the messianic message was delivered also to three wise men in the east as well. Am I in the Bible? It was delivered with the birth of a new star in the heavens. You do know that the wise men who were astrologers uh, by trade believed that the appearance of a new star announced the birth of a king. Their belief was so strong that, that they followed the star for months until they brought it to the star, brought them to the infant Jesus. Here's what I like. When they got there, guess what the Bible says? They presented him with gifts. I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. It says they presented him with gifts. And they presented him with gifts fit for a king. I'm about done, but listen. As the manger cradled the Christ child, our king, even then, I would imagine his touch must have been inspiring. Didn't this read? I would imagine even then as an infant, his eyes must have been penetrating. I would imagine that his ears must have been attentive. Why would you say that, Pastor Coffey? Because the power of his father was within him. The message, the message in the manger was a simple message. Y'all, it was a message of help. It was a message of hope. And for those of us who embrace the gifts of salvation, it's our ticket to heaven. Now, that was good right there. Y'all should have said thank you, Jesus, for that right there. This baby in a manger was the Messiah who would one day receive glory and honor. This baby in the manger would be worshipped and he would be praised. This baby in a manger would be the head of the church. This baby in a manger would be the Lord's of Lord. Thank God to tell you, this baby in the manger is, in fact, the king of kings. Uh, and right now sits upon the throne over the universe. Um, and one day we shall bow before him and cast our crowns at his feet. I'm about done, y'all. Listen, this baby in a manger would one day sense our thirst and quench it. Um, this baby would one day in a manger identify our hunger and feed us. Uh, this baby would one day in a manger 
isolate our shame and remove it. This baby would one day discover our trouble and cure it. Anybody glad about this baby? This same baby would be hung up for our hang-ups. Um, this baby would, can I preach it like I feel it? <laughs> this baby would pay a debt that he did not owe because we owed a debt that we could not pay. Preach about the coffin. Listen, y'all ought to come on and celebrate with me. I'm done. Um, because this baby, who is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe, is alive and well even today. Um, do y'all know his name? Um, do do y'all know his name? Uh, well, come on and celebrate with me. Uh, this baby baby who came down, Deacon Murray, here it is, through 40 and two generations. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he, he came down. Watch this. It's going to get you right here. He came down as the only suitable sacrifice for a sin sick world. I like that. Listen, y'all, just in case you missed it when I just said it before, let me try it again. Oh, come let us adore him. Uh, why would you do that? For he alone is worthy. If there anybody can testify that even if I don't get a gift up under the tree, I'm glad I'm covered by the the one who died on a tree, uh, the one who showed up in humanity in a stable, uh, the, the one who hung, bled, and died, but declared that, listen, uh, all power is in my hand. Uh, but you know, you gotta, you can't get to the end without getting to the beginning. It all started in a manger. And, and the hymn writer says, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. Uh, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Aren't y'all glad Jesus didn't stay in the manger? Aren't y'all glad Jesus didn't stay in the manger? Aren't you glad he got up out of that manger? Aren't you glad he got up? Aren't you glad that he finished his assignment? Aren't you glad that he recognized that if I don't show up, ain't no hope for Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast. So I'm going to go ahead and grow up and be ridiculed, be sacrificed and suffer. And I'm going to also come back because none but the righteous shall see God. Uh, let me say it again. If you don't get a gift under the tree, you ought to be shouting because you received the Savior who died on the tree. If there anybody can say, thank God for the manger. Manger. There's so many, so many, so, so many nuggets in here. Showed up in a manger. For some folk, that means God wanted you to know it doesn't matter how you start. That matter where you come from. That was good right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The manger. So many messages in the manger. In fact, the Bible says this. And the last, <laughs> the first. <laughs> Woo. But it's Christmas. I know y'all got pots running, so I'm going to move on. Listen. As we celebrate the birth of the Savior. We see the significance of the manger. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I know most of us cannot wait to get home if you had already done it. To go and open up the gifts under the tree. I ain't mad, I ain't hating, God bless you. But listen to me. For you to take full benefit of this day called Christmas, you have to accept that gift on a personal basis. Some of y'all got that new outfit you wanted, that new pair of shoes. But the gift I'm talking about, you cannot purchase at Walmart. The gift I'm talking about, Amazon can't bring it to you. The gift I'm talking about, you don't have to have at least a thousand dollars in your bank account to receive it. This gift, the Bible says, is available for who? Merry Christmas. Whosoever. If you're listening in, I want you to know. You may not have a dime in your pocket, and you can still have a Merry Christmas. How is that possible, preacher? We 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 live in a world where we are judged by the stuff we got. We, we, we're considered successful with the most stuff we have. I have the, how can I have a Merry Christmas? Because once you accept Christ, you have the greatest gift ever offered to mankind. I told you earlier, kings and kingdoms 
They're going to all pass up. But there's something about the name Jesus. He's the one who, who showed up in the landscape of humanity in obedience to his heavenly father. He's the one who paid the debt. He's the one who gives us access so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. If you're listening today, or we have technology tuning in, or if you're in the sanctuary, and you don't have Christ as Lord of your life, let me offer you the most precious of gifts. Because all you got to do is say, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your way. I'll trust you in our own way. If you acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you're in need of a Savior, and if you believe you hung on that rugged cross, buried in a bar of truth, three days later, got it with all power in his hand. And if you recognize that you need him in your life and you're willing to open your heart to him, you can receive the greatest gift of all. It's as simple as ABC. Acknowledge, believe, and confess. Confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Is he going to give you a gift card to go to the mall? No, ma'am, I can't promise you that. But what he will give you, he'll give you what you need to stand in the storms of life. Because if you hadn't experienced this yet, it's not a matter of if they're going to come. It's just a matter of when. But when you got this gift, you'll find yourself saying, I may bend, but I won't break. Because of the gift that's in me. You'll find yourself saying, though he slay me, I ain't going nowhere. You'll find yourself saying, Deacon Murray, I mean, when it's show sure enough rough, you'll say, for God, I live. God, uh, now you can only say that when you received the gift. If there's some man, some woman, some boy, or some girl, someone listening in, let today be a brand new start for you. What better way to celebrate his birth than connected with him as your Lord and Savior? The number is 386 447 5719. 386 447 Five seven one and call in today. You can receive a new lease on life. If you're in the sanctuary today, the doors of the church are now swing open. There's some man, some woman, some boy or girl. If you want to experience real joy, joy that money can't buy, a joy that problems can't snatch away. It only comes from receiving and accepting this gift made available by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you come today? See them as Lord and prayerfully allow this church to be the place where you will be nurtured and grow. As we have committed ourselves here at Mount Calvary to do a serious work for a soon coming king. Doors swing open. Will there be one today? Some man, some woman, some boy, or some girl. Come on, receive the gift. It's free. It's free. Will you come? anything but an obedient spirit to everyone I if you're here and you're, you're not connected with a church we pray that you would come if you're here would you come to you you need a place where you can continue to grow in God's word be among God's people and live in God's way. We bid you come. You may come by letter or your Christian experience. If you're here, we bid you come today. What better time than now? Because tomorrow is not promised. Will you come? Oh, I Four, four, 
347 5719. Come on, call it. Come on. Let's start the new year off right. on glasses I still can't read. Okay, I got it now. Then we thank God for your presence and for your power that is ours because we received the gift that showed up in the life of mankind by way of a manger. And I'm so glad that I can celebrate not because of what I have of under the tree, per se, but because I'm infused, tied up, and tangled up with the one who died on the tree. And that makes all the difference. If you don't believe me, I know some of you all have gotten gifts uh, probably as early as last year. They're either in the closet or you have already gifted them to somebody else. But when you receive this gift, not only are you glad you have it, you have to share it with somebody else. It's just that good. For me, the joy of this season be with you. May love of God continue to cover you. And may his peace forever be found all about you. Enjoy family, enjoy friends, enjoy the blessings of this day. And just remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? Amen. I was informed, I've got it now, that we have several of our young people who are home for the holidays uh, who are here. And I guess uh, they don't consider themselves family and they're right. So let me just ask uh, all of our students who are home from college, uh, if you all would stand, those who are visiting for the holidays. I think I heard the Harrison brothers are here. I think Darrell is here. Sophia is here, and I talked about uh, Brother Tony last night. Tony Jacobs is here, uh, and, and any others that are part of our family, our young people. Would you stand? <laughs> Everybody's all grown up. God bless you. Thank you for coming home. We pray that you all have a blessed time as you're celebrating time away from school and your other endeavors. And know that we are proud of you and we thank God for each and every one of you. And we pray that you all continue to hold up the light of Jesus Christ wherever you go. Amen. One more time. Let's celebrate our young people. Choir, thank you. Musicians, thank you. Rep, Pinnock, Watson, thank you as well. 
We pray again that the joy of Jesus will be with you, not just today, but through the days to come. Let us all stand. One verse of silent night. Do a little different today. One verse of silent. God and our Father, how we thank you for the gift that keeps on giving. As we pause to worship and celebrate the Christ child, I pray that we continue to let this excitement carry us through the remainder of this year and into the new year. We thank you for the baby in the manger. We thank you for the message in the manger. And we're so grateful that that was the Messiah that showed up in the manger. And we praise God that he lives in us. That's why we're able to face tomorrow because the gift is within us. And we pray that you continue to let us be a light in this season in which we find ourselves. We love you, we praise, we thank you. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these thy people. Now, henceforth, and for evermore. And all the God's people say it. Silent. God bless you. Oh. oh.